Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. In a recent lesson in the music theory series of videos, I covered the chromatic scale and its basic construction and fingering on bass. This week, I'm going to show you how you can use that same scale for working on your technique. So, as I pointed out in uh, that last lesson, we've got a whole array of different fingerings and shapes that can be used in playing a chromatic scale. But for the sake of this lesson, I'm going to just stick to my favourite pattern and fingering of choice, which, uh, working from a root note of C, is as follows. So, we've got the second finger there, C, C sharp, D, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, then move on to the next string up. And then we've got the E flat there, slide up to the E, F, F sharp, G, so first finger slide up, then we've got one, two, three, four, fingering wise. Then we jump down to the A flat, slide up to the A, B flat, B, C. And if you have any problems with that, getting that down or anything to do with the chromatic scale, make sure to go over that lesson in the music theory uh, series, uh, because that fingering there, I do uh, go over that. So just as I showed in one of the other technique lessons uh, where I went through a major scale, we're going to break this chromatic scale up into fragments and then we're going to work on each one individually in isolation. So first of all, we just want to look at the first two notes, that's all. So we're going to have C and D flat. Okay, so starting on the second finger and then moving to the third finger. And we're going to be starting with the first finger of the picking hand and then of course the D flat with the second finger of the picking hand. And you want to look at that. Each uh, each note wants to be uh, nice and clean. You don't want any scuffing. And both hands want to be nice and relaxed. And there we have <laughs> the Jaws theme. C to D flat there. Okay. So now let's add the D, the next note in the uh, in the scale. So. And we're going to be using second finger, third finger, fourth finger in this hand, and it's one, two, one in this hand. That's because we're using alternating picking um, in the picking hand, obviously, and we're going to use alternating picking all the way through. So we don't want any raking, it's all going to be alternate. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, and uh, as I mentioned in that last, uh, that last lesson on uh, technique building, um, you want the hands to be nice and uh, uh, relaxed and you don't want this little finger down here so that you're having to move up like this um, if that's the case you want to pivot the hand round so that this fourth finger the pinky there the little finger is parallel with the frets okay so that that fourth finger there it's in line with the frets uh, a lot of people will have the hands down here so that this little finger is sort of hanging around you know just you know, hanging around down there, down on that edge of the neck. So uh, pivot it round with the thumb there, just so that we've got this nice line. Bend the fingers slightly, as I said in that lesson again, because, you know, the first finger, second finger there are so much higher up than this fourth finger. So you want to bend them slightly to uh, even them up and then just have a nice line along here. Okay, so uh, again, that's the technique side out of the way. Just aim to be relaxed with this. So. So we've got, and then once you've nailed that, up and down. And then once you feel comfortable with that and confident, just build up speed on it. And if you find that you're scuffing and it's starting to go out of, you know, you're losing coordination, uh, just slow it right down. These chromatic scales are tough in this way because we do a lot of uh, movement on one string. Moving quite quickly across strings is actually a lot easier. It's a lot harder to play on one string up and down uh, at speed. So, okay. So now let's add the E flat. So, and we have to stretch down a bit to get the E flat there. So that's at the sixth fret of the uh, of the A string. And you want to try and keep that fourth finger held somewhere up there, you know, around the 10th fret. You don't have to hold it down on the string, you just want to keep it in that general vicinity so that we get a nice, a nice hand shape there, so we're not moving around all over the place. And again, we'll be moving with the second finger there. So we've got one, two, one, two, so the E flat's with the second finger. 
And then once you feel confident with that, up and down. And as I say, there's quite a bit of a stretch involved here. Technically, when you're playing this kind of line, um, you're likely to have the hand start moving around quite a bit when you do the stretch. So just keep that hand relaxed. Try not to tense up too much. And also, if you start to feel any tension in this hand and you start to cramp up, because uh, that can happen when you, you, you know, as, as we work up this chromatic scale and a lot of the stretches involved, and because we're using the fourth finger quite a lot, if that starts to happen, you start to cramp up, especially in this part of the hand, just have a break and come back to it later, you know, a few minutes afterwards or, you know, have a coffee or something like that. And when you come back, you'll probably feel a lot more loosened off and then carry on. So now let's add the next note, the E, okay? So, and that's gonna be played with the second finger there. We're not gonna do the slide yet, we'll do the slide later. Okay, then once you've uh, nailed that, up and down. And this might be a kind of pattern that you've not really seen that much. It's, it's not a very common, you know, pattern moving in that way. But it is good for, uh, for your technique. It's good for stretches and it's good for just exercising the digits. Uh, and it's always good to play stuff that you're not, the fingers just aren't familiar with. You get a lot of muscle memory playing stuff that's very, you know, common, like, you know, that kind of line. Whereas it's just a, an unusual line, you know, it's the same with all these chromatic things. Okay, so again, keep the hand relaxed and just aim for um, to keep nice clean tone. You don't want to be scuffing. So now let's just work through all the different notes, um, you know, for the sake of time. Um, and always remember that each one of these fragments that we're playing can be practiced on its own. So if you find that one in particular gives you a problem, then just work on that particular one. You know, because some of them, even the later ones, you might find a lot easier for some reason, you know, just because of the way that the fingers work or the finger that you end up landing on. So, uh, you know, all these fragments are to be used in isolation, which is why I'm playing them one at a time rather than just playing a chromatic scale up and down. And also, when you play through them in this way, you know, just taking one, working on it, next one, work on it, it really does give you a workout in the hand. And you'll see this as you're working through, by the time you get to the last one and you've played through it a few times, you know, all of a sudden, you've, you might have spent five or 10 minutes just playing through a chromatic scale, each time very different. You know, it's not the same as just playing up and down a chromatic scale in one octave, just, you know, on its own, just up and down. Taking these fragments in this way really does, you know, break it up and make it less, uh, less boring in a way. Because if you were to just play up and down, up and down, that'd get boring pretty quick. But these fragments, each one of them has their own challenges. So let's add the F. So, so we're gonna play that with the third finger. So I'm still not doing the slide yet. So we've got the first finger, second finger, third finger there on the A string. And uh, this hand, we're gonna be ending on the second finger. So that's the waypoint there. So we know that we've done it correctly if we land on that second finger. Okay, then up and down. And as I said to a student the other day, we start hearing howling wind there. Now the F sharp. And again, we're not using the slide yet. There we've got one, two, three, four in that hand. And I'm moving up to the E string there with the thumb. So I started on the pickup, then I jump onto the E string as I move onto this A string. Now we'll add the G, and this time we're gonna slide up. There's the slide. And we're finishing on the second finger there. And you'll know 
know whether you're actually, you know, whether your coordination's good there. Um, you don't want to feel like you're dragging or, or the fingers aren't um, uh, meeting up correctly. You know, you don't want one finger being out of sync with the other one. Each finger, as you're picking, that finger is coming down as you're picking. So you have a nice precise sound. Now let's move across to the D string, so the A flat there, so... And that's going to be with the first finger. And I'm not moving the thumb across yet on the picking hand, I'm just keeping it there on the E string because we're only moving across for that one note. And then up and down. Now we move up to the A. Second finger there on the fretting hand. Second finger of the uh, picking hand. Up and down. Now we'll add the B flat. Third finger there of the of the fretting hand, so one, two, three there on the D string. And we finish on the first finger of the uh, of the picking hand. Up and down. Now the B. And we're finishing on the fourth finger there, so we've got one, two, three, four of the finger in there in the uh, on the D string. And we're finishing on the second finger there of the picking hand. Up and down. And now the C, and we're going to use the slide up on the D string, so. A flat there, slide up to the A. And of course when we slide, we're not sliding, we're not just playing the first note, we're actually playing both, but it's a position shift. So we play both of those notes, we don't just play the A flat and then slide without picking. Up and down. So by now, moving across, you should have the thumb on the A string when we get up onto that D string. So uh, if I move across again, move across there onto the E string when we're on the A string, and then when we move across onto the A flat there on the D string, you should be moving the thumb onto the A string because we're trying to keep it as close to the action as possible and also there in order to mute uh, any of the notes back here. So there I've moved the thumb. So now we've worked up to the octave, we can work up there and then back. Uh, and we'll work back in incremental steps. Uh, so we'll work up and then back to the B, work up and then back to the B flat, etc., etc. And I'll just, uh, for the sake of time, I'll just work through them one at a time and I'll just let you know which thing you should be finishing on because that's, that's probably where things will start to go wrong, okay? So uh, first of all, we move back to the B. Okay, so that's finishing on the second finger. Back to the B flat, finishing on the first finger. Now back to the A, finishing on the second finger. Now back to the A flat, sliding back down, finishing on the first finger. Now we'll work back to the G, finishing on the second finger of the picking hand. And 
that can often be a, a tricky one because coming back onto that second finger is quite tough. That's where people get the uh, uh, feeling that they want to rake. Okay, then back to the F sharp. Finishing on the first finger. Now back to the F. Finishing on the second finger. Now back to the E, finishing on the first finger of the picking hand. Now back to the E flat, finishing on the second finger. Now we'll move back to the D and we'll be finishing on the first finger. If you have any problems with that, just remember that when we got to the G in the descent, we were on the second finger. And then you've got the remaining notes there, okay? Now finally, moving down to the D flat. And that's ended on the second finger. And then finally, obviously back down to the C. And when we finish on the C, we should be back at the first finger. And that's the complete chromatic scale. So these individual fragments can be quite a workout for this hand because we're using a lot of third and fourth finger in there. You know, as we're moving up there, coming up and down on this third and fourth finger and, and every finger's getting a workout. So um, working through those in that order, you know, you should end up with quite a, a warmed up hand. So it's a, it's a really good warm up. So once you've worked through some of these fragments, you can start to apply sequencing to that scale. And this can end up with some really, really weird fingerings. So um, if you look at a major scale, bog standard normal major scale, so C major there, we can apply sequencing in fours like this. So we're going up from uh, in groups of four from each consecutive note. C, D, E, F, D, E, F, G, E, F, G, A, F, G, A, B, etc. So we can apply that to the chromatic scale. And of course, because we've got loads and loads of notes, um, it can be quite odd uh, in terms of the fingerings. So let's have a look at that fingering for the chromatic scale again. So if we start on the first one, playing a group of four, dot C, C sharp, D, D sharp. Then from the next one, the D flat there, or C sharp. So that's the two together. Then we start from the D. Then we work up to the E flat. Up another one, and then we're in uh, place to start the same kind of fingering again there at that F. Okay, so that's the whole sequence. Okay, so uh, like I say, very strange fingering there. Then we can work back down through the sequence, starting up at that C, group of four, group of four. Okay. So now let's try working up and then back down. Okay, so like I said, some very strange uh, fingerings in there and it can be a real finger twister. 
Once you've worked through these sequences in fours, you can move on to threes, fives, sixes, sevens, any type of number, and uh, they're all gonna work in very different ways, and they're gonna work your hands in, in ways that you're probably not used to. So far, I've just stuck to showing you these, uh, these sequences and fragments uh, using that second finger pattern for the chromatic scale, but you can apply them to any of the other fingerings, so you could apply them to the first finger, or the chromatic scale starting on the fourth finger. Okay, so any one of those different fingers, and each one's going to give you a completely different uh, problem to solve as you're working through. So try incorporating some of these chromatic scales into your practice routine. Uh, they can really help with finger independence and dexterity, and they're a little bit different from the same old major and minor scale patterns that uh, you see every day. So you get to hand your mo uh, they move your hands around in different ways, and you get to hear some tonal combinations that you don't get to hear so often. So please like this video and subscribe if it's helped. Also visit TalkingBass.net for more lessons, articles and downloads. And subscribe to receive the free scale reference guide that's full of interesting scale patterns for you to practice. Just like this one. Okay, see you later.